Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to Unit Lost. I am Stylosa and this is Overanalyze. Now, apologies for this being away for a few weeks because when I travel, it just really screws us up because this takes ages to make Overanalyze. Us. Like, it, it literally takes an entire day just to put these videos together. It is insane. So, what we're going to do in this video is take a look at a Moira player. Now, this is a Grandmaster level game and this actually is around the level where I play the game. It's sort of low sort of GM. It's like 4.1 to 4.2k. That's kind of where I play most of my games on my hidden account, which I will never tell you guys the name of. <laughs> I think Stylosa and Spitfire, which you guys see footage of on the channel, I think they're around like uh, 3.8-ish k, something like that. So whatever. Anyway, what we're going to do here is laugh at the crosshair on the screen because it is crazily bad. But also, I believe this player, David Bowie, uh, has been an overanalyzed before, which is which must be a first. I don't think anybody's actually had two overanalyzed. I mean, considering the number of submissions that get sent in to this series that's pretty pretty damn lucky right then what we're gonna do is uh well I, I, I won't throw this up on the screen but i'll tell you what he said in his email uh, he's a lucio main but he's gonna try and play moira so what we're gonna see in this video clip is somebody who cannot play moira at this level but also this raises a problem doesn't it with overwatch and this is why we need role select because when you uh get into a game and you're not playing the hero that got you to the rank you're at, you're nowhere near as good. Like, if I had to suddenly play, uh, I don't know, uh, I'd like Tracer at my level where I'm playing Moira and Winston, well, it, it's not going to work, ladies and gentlemen. It's just not going to work. This is what happens. Also, we don't need to talk like that attacker in the chat, do we? No. Right then, what we're going to look at here is Moira. And we're going to look at a Lucio player trying to play Moira in GM. So what we need to focus on, uh, is not the chat because that was terrible off attack. You shouldn't be. You should be saying things like that. Is what this Moira player is doing. So we fade it in, and then we are. Uh, why are we healing? Right. That is like a complete waste of a healing orb. We've killed three of the enemy oh, teams. Bro. This this orb go, just counts nothing. Also, the enemy team have got Gibe. Now, I've, I used to play quite a bit with Gibe. I think he's like a, I think he's typically a Bastion main, <laughs> but he does flex and play other heroes. But you get that at this level, right? You will come across odd. Um, in fact, let's just pause on the hero screen. Here we go. Or well, pause on the uh, tab screen. So you will come across random picks at, like, at any level of the game, really. But at GM, it can be more compounded. Because if you've got somebody who is like a May main, but they're in GM, they think they're great at May, so they play May all the time. So you have to work around them. And that's, it's frustrating, right? That's why we should probably have role select. And it goes into the, uh, the argument of if you're like a Lucio main or you're like, a, let's say, a Winston main in this team, but... It, we can't play Winston because attackers playing Winston, then we've got to play something else. We're not as effective. So if we could always queue with our most effective hero, that would be great. Anyway, team comp wise, this is like, this is fine. Like what will happen in GM, it will be more meta centric that the teams will. So your team is, you know, is fine. Moira, great primary healer. Winston, great dive tank. Uh, Widowmaker on both sides is fantastic on Temple of Anubis. Uh, Zen, best support in the game. So he's just, you'll notice he's on both teams there, naturally. Genji is Genji. Diva is extremely good. The, I mean, a defensive team. If I had to nitpick with this team, this McCree is not a very good pick here. This should probably be Junkrat. But then you could say the Doomfist isn't a good pick. That could be Junkrat. Uh, whatever. Like, it kind of doesn't matter. These teams are okay. What you're going to notice in GM level games and... Uh, Hopefully in higher master level games is you'll get two tanks and two support go, boys. and then DPS. In terms of voice comms as well, you'll get people calling out who they've killed, what ultimates are up and stuff like that, which obviously doesn't happen in lower levels. And why are you throwing that orb into there? <laughs> Moira is terrible when she doesn't have her orbs available. Like I can tell by your control of the mouse here, it's very jittery. Like you're not, this sounds really stupid, but you're not used to aiming. Um... Like, in terms of target priority and our positioning kit, it's not too bad. Like, the golden rule with Moira is when you're not healing, you're holding down right click. So when you don't have your heal, well, you don't need to heal, you're going to be trying to damage people because that's how you recharge your heal. The thing with Moira's heal is it, it depletes rapid. So a lot of the time I've noticed, and it's interesting how this has changed, is I went from spamming the damage orb all of the time to pretty much spamming the heal orb. And when I, I go into a fight, get... I'm not looking yeah, to yeah, use yeah. the damage Someone orb else. immediately. Like, like the, there when you... I mean, let's just, let's just assess why you did that because that was completely pointless. Look, you've got your ultimate ready. Throwing your damage orb into them is... It does nothing. It doesn't give you any ult charge. It doesn't damage them enough for somebody to kill them because they're all together and we're... You know, we've just been pushed back sort of thing. Um, so what does it do? 
Well, it gives them ultimate charge, so that's not great, is it? So in this case, you shouldn't have used your orb at all. We should have kept the heal orb. And remember, that's the only way you can heal yourself. And also remember, the primary fire heal is a heal over time. This means you don't have to constantly hold left click down, which I you seem to be doing, again, to heal people right, to full right, health. Right, it will heal over time. Yes, what you do is you just sort of burst bits of heal onto people and let the, 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 the heal over time, the hot, sort of take place. It's not a super heal. It's not going to heal them fully, but it's going to heal them right. enough so you can focus on other targets. Because remember, bongo, bongo, Moira bongo. cannot just keep healing she will run out that use there of the ultimate wasn't too bad i mean the enemy team were all together like moira's ultimate is not a defensive ultimate really yes you can heal with it but yes you can do damage with it it's more of like a weird initiation ultimate like here like moira is super strong right you can see on the point she's putting out tons of healing you're doing moira stuff this is fine the only problem i've got here is you're sort of in the middle of the team um your aim is really really shaky uh, so this is my problem, right? You're in the middle of the team. You're probably going to get hit by something when the enemy start respawning. I would have taken up a position on the bridge. Yeah, it stops you getting that. flanked like you just got flanked. I'm not saying you would have been able to take the point there as a result of that, but it was bad positioning. You should not have been on the point there. You should have let all your team brawl on the point. You're very like vulnerable like moira is difficult to kill but you are still quite vulnerable so you have to be careful don't put yourself into positions where you're going to die one thing you will notice as well guys is look at this 58 percent ultimate charge already and we used that all in that fight moira can charge your ultimate like crazy now this here where you just threw that orb in there that's actually quite good and the reason why that is good is because you are charging your 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 ult basically yes the enemy team will get support ult charge because they'll heal the damage that you're putting into them but it is good because you will get ultimate charge. And we don't need the orb right now. Right? We can just use primary fire heal and that's cool. Like one of the things... Oh, that's unlucky. Um, we've got our ultimate charge available. I thought we were about to die to that pulse bomb. We've got, actually got a pick now. So we should ult this. We should totally have ulted into this. Because remember, it's a heal. Like, And it act, does actually heal quite well. Like... You can argue you did the right thing there. You used the orb and then you started firing the ultimate. The reason I would have used the ultimate quick is because we needed to get rapid healing onto our tanks that were basically diving in there. But it looks like... Well, I was going to say it looks like we did okay. We haven't. We've done terrible. I mean, the whole team is dead. But whatever. You can't necessarily say that was our fault. The good thing is we do have gold healing. Now, a major, major, like, eh, eh, uh oh, something is going wrong is if you're playing Moira and you do not have gold healing, there is a problem. You should always have gold healing. The only time you shouldn't have it is if you're playing Moira with Mercy and Mercy is, for some reason, doing tons of healing or you're playing Moira with Anna and Anna is playing out of her mind. In every other case, Moira should always have gold healing. No. Okay, whatever. I was going to rage about the fact we don't have orb, but... Did we actually get the orb onto the point there? I think our orb bounced off on... Oh, no, there it is. Okay. But whatever. We, we, we're going in to secure yeah, the point. Boys. So that's okay. But there is a lot of positional mistakes there. And your use of her the abilities are really weird. Bro. Like, you have to Thanks. think, only use the orb when you need to use... I mean, if you're a Lucio player, when do you use Amp It Up? Use the same mentality for Amp It Up to Moira's orbs. Don't just throw them around like, hey, whatever. Mm -hmm. Also, I'm digging that the fact that you're using the David Bowie skin for Moira as well. <laughs> also, your name kind of just makes sense, doesn't it, with Moira? <laughs> um, but yeah, like treat the orbs like this rare commodity, this rare resource. You only use them when you need to use them. So think to yourself a couple of questions. Number one, do I need ultimate charge? If you do, throw your orb in. Be aware of Genji. Be aware of D.Va. They can... Well, Genji can deflect your orb back. Diva can eat the orb. Everybody else will take a load of damage off the orb. Well, not a load of damage, but they'll take, you know, you'll damage them. You'll tickle them with the orb, but it'll give you a load of ultimate charge. Also, if you're a, you know you're about to go into a team fight or the enemy team are about to engage onto your team, it is almost certainly worth using the heal orb. Never, ever, ever use the damage orb when a massive team fight is breaking out because the healing will outweigh the damage you will do because it will keep your team alive longer. They will always do more damage than you will do. Moira doesn't do that much damage. A lot of people are like, oh my God, Moira is so OP. I noticed this at lower ranks. I mean, today when I was looking through the overanalyzed videos for Moira, I went through some 15 videos. This was the highest rated one by far, but a lot of the lower level ones, people are complaining in the game that Moira is OP. She does too much damage. But the people dying to Moira are like brain dead Genji players who are jumping like, who are trying to take on Moira, but like can't obviously aim and so can't kill her. But she's just sort of trying to right click on them, you know, and Moira's like, it isn't an auto lock on attack. You have to track the target. It does lock on when you get real close to them, but it's not like Symmetra where you basically don't have to aim. You have to aim Moira's um, primary, uh, secondary fire, but they will die to it repeatedly. You'll notice in this game, Moira isn't really deadly with damage and she shouldn't be, but she can put out lots of healing. That's why I think there comes a point in the game where 
like maybe platinum below or maybe even like diamond and below you can be a more damaged orientated moira i'm not saying do that because okay, you still need to heal but as you get up to gm you, you really really need to stop focusing healing all right let's take a look at this so uh one of the things with fade there is quite a lot of fade tech available so this means you can if i just pause this here right i'll show you so with fade you can um you see this uh bit of a ramp here you can actually if you're starting here right you can fade up this and jump up in the air. I'm not saying this is of any use here right now, but you can do this quite a lot all over the place. On Hanamura, if, just imagine we're on Hanamura for a second on the first point. You know there is that rock sort of in the middle, yeah? And then there's this is the window, right? So this is the defender's spawn, yeah? There is the small health pack there. There's sort of the little bit of high ground here. There's the little sort of um, perch there where you can fire through the window here sort of thing, right? Uh, this is the main door. Right, so like the, this, this is an awesome diagram. Anyway, if you're Moira, you can come this way. You can fade up this rock. It will jump you in the air, and you can get onto this high ground there. Not the ledge high ground, but the high ground where you know like the large health pack is there. There's a lot of jumps you can do like that with Moira, and it's actually surprisingly quite effective to get you out of some situations. But it's not really something like we can heavily focus on. Like it's something you have to really practice in custom games and just sort of see, you know, what you can do. Right, so. One thing I would say with your fade usage is it's okay. Like, you can use fade in one or two ways. Like, this is a great example here, right? Use it aggressively to go forward. We know we've won the fight, so we're just going to go forward and secure it. You use it to get out of situations. And with fade, you can get out of graviton surge as well. You need to be very aware of this. If you get grabbed, get the hell out of the grav and throw your heal or back into the grav. Moira is actually super duper duper effective. Uh, like almost countering grabs without using her ultimate. Yeah, I mean, you can use your ultimate into an enemy grab and it will sort of help your team. But um, if they don't use like a, a pulse bomb or some sort of high damage attack, like a, a rip tire, if they just grab you and try and wipe you out with like Reinhardt swinging into you, you can actually almost out heal that damage. You can throw your orb in and start left clicking over everybody and it does a ton of healing. This is mental though. This is bad positioning, right? I think we're about to fade here to get out of the way. Yeah, but we're still like in an iffy position here. What we did here, and what I really, really don't like, and this just goes to show you guys watching this video, this happens at every level. You had a decent position of which you just then jumped off the high ground into the uh, enemy team, and now you're on the low ground so they can pump damage into you. Like, think about where you were. You were here, right? And then you jumped down this way and faded back to where you are now. Imagine if you just walked over here, right? You're still in the high ground. They can't do anything to you. You can still, like, chuck orbs down and, and like heal some of your team you could use your ultimate fire there's a lot of things you could do now i'm worried i mean yeah we've lost genji that's not great but i'm worried now because when the enemy team are just Hello. barrel rolling onto the point it's usually quite bad for us zen comes out with a big uh transcendence there but it doesn't really matter because we got slammed and wrecked and now we're dead but that's fine whatever it's very difficult to stop enemy teams when they just run onto the point right also i want you guys to take take that as a lesson away from this video Whatever level you're playing at the game, it doesn't matter. Rank doesn't matter. Who cares? If you walk onto the point, you'll win the game. <laughs> right? This is good. Pro tips, yeah. Get together, walk onto the point, everything is cool. Right. So let's take, like, that was some fade tech there, the way you can jump over that gap. So what we're looking at here, again, is your usage of the orbs. That orb was okay. We throw it out just to sort of heal the Winston. We know there's no pressure. We know we're going to get the orb available, possibly, for when we need it again. Although this isn't looking great. And we've thrown a damage orb in. Our Winston manages just about to get out. And this is looking quite bad again. It's looking like a bit of a mess. We need to get out of here with Fade, yeah. I think we're going to be able to save Winston. Uh oh. Mm. I'm just going to take a drink, guys. Oh my god, hang on. Professionalism. <laughs> yeah. I, don't know, I should probably have edited that out, shouldn't I? Whatever, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Professionalism. Yeah, so... Uh, hmm. Hmm, Moira. Like, Moira is... A lot of people do go on about Moira being like super powerful I and super strong. You know, she, she's replaced uh, Mercy. It's the Moira meta. Temple of Anubis is a Moira map. Oh dear. Oh dear. So this is a lapse of concentration, right? You have to respect Widowmakers. GM level Widowmakers will not miss shots. You cannot, you absolutely cannot do what you just did there. Because this is snowball territory. This is so bad. Plus I'm going to switch to McCream. Like, this is so, so bad. Yeah, and they're just rushing the point, and they've killed you, Zen. This is like, this is nightmare scenario. Like, at no point should you expose yourself, not just as Moira, but as anybody. You should never expose yourself there. Like, because we've lost this point now, unless there's some sort of miracle. 
I'm not saying that's because you died, but it's a factor, right? So we've got to be aware of that. Mm, looks like we're kind of... Uh, they're using... Gra like, I don't know. I guess we just pop our ult straight into this now and hope for the best. Actually, it looks like you might hold. See, so this is the thing with Temple of Nubis. Like, it can be we bad and then suddenly be decent. I don't know why you're not uh, using your ultimate. We've got Coalescence. You're 5v4. You're 5v4. Yeah, what's that? Like, this is very ballsy. Like, we... I would have blasted Coalescence what? immediately into this fight. Oh, no. Oof. Now we're using it at a really bad time. Like... I don't know why you held on to it for so long. Coalescence charges so quick, you probably would have been like 50% towards another one. We managed to hold anyway, which is a miracle, to be quite honest. Like an absolute miracle. But hey, 2CP, Blizzard's gift to esports, gaming, and whatever in general. Sometimes that can happen. But the enemy team, well, they should not have lost that. But remember, do not ever, ever, ever expose yourself like that on Temple of Anubis or on any 2CP map. If you lose the first point and you're one of the first people to die when the first point goes, you'll respawn quick. Uh, well, you'll respawn first in the other point and uh, you could be attacked. Like, watch out for flankers coming at you or, or like, Widowmakers trying to kill you. Like, that orb. Oh, Jesus. These orbs are so bad. Like, this... I know you're learning Moira, and there's no better place to learn Moira than, like, in competitive. I mean, there's no better place to learn any hero, guys, than there is in competitive. But you threw an orb there, just like off the map. Like that that hero did not, I think it was the Diva that was up there, didn't really need healing. It might have been the Winston that much. Like the orb is such a massive heal. You have to be very uh, careful with it. Like you can't just chuck it about and be like, oh, whatever. I threw it off the map. Like at least try and bounce it off surfaces. At least like throw it parallel. Like obviously what you want to be. Oh. Yeah, like throwing it parallel there across the point is great. Good Diva bomb. So we're actually okay. This isn't too bad. And we just sort of go around and clean up. Farm the Roadhog. Let's go, boys. He should be dead. Uh, yeah, should be dead. Oh, and we've got Coalescence. Somehow, <laughs> the Roadhog yeah, kills bad. the Lucio before he dies. Yeah, Madness. And we got Beat and Coalescence. Right, so, another thing as well, which you're not, like, again, this, this shows that you're not very used to playing with Moira, is, I mean, you don't obviously need to do it right now, but, uh, this Coalescence and charging Coalescence with, um, uh, the damage orb is something that you really need to try and maximize. Like at the start of a game, we should be looking to throw the orb into the enemy spawn just to get that little bit of charge or throw it into a position where we know it's going to cause some damage to the enemy and give us charge because all of the ultimate charge advantage we can get is great because remember, Overwatch is just a game about ultimates most of the time. Anyway, down here towards the enemy spawn, what I'd be looking to do with Moira is when the fight finishes, so when everybody's dead, I'd be looking to throw an orb straight down into their spawn. Not expose yourself, because remember, you can use Fade to get the hell away. But you throw that orb in, get the hell out of there, and it's going to charge your ultimate up more. But I've not seen any of that just yet. Maybe you start doing it throughout the video, I don't know, but I haven't seen any of it, and it's kind of... Yeah, so you're sort of chucking orbs down there, which is achieving the same sort of thing. But remember, we've got Transcendence up. Now, so uh, uh, coalescence up. So that was just a complete waste yeah, of an orb because all that's going to do is give the enemy ultimate charge. So, yeah. chase on left, chase on left. like, I don't have anything against throw, like, again, that orb was crap. Like, I don't have anything against throwing the orb into a team fight sometimes or trying to do damage if your team are attacking them. That's kind of okay. Like, it's very hard for me to sort of say when is the right time to use the heal orb or when is the right time to use the damage orb in a team fight. Like, the easy thing for me to say, as I said earlier on in the video, nice, is just nice, to fall nice. back on always use the heal orb uh, because wrong, you know you're going to get maximum value. Like, there. You've used the heal orb, you're going to get value off that heal orb. Okay. Also, remember, tra uh, it's not transcendent style, it's bloody coalescence. That ultimate charge is so quick, you can be a bit gung-ho with it. Like, it doesn't matter if you use it in the wrong situation because it's not really an ultimate that's going to win the game. It's not like transcendence that's going to stop Genji Blade or it's not like, you know... Uh, uh, drop the beat, which is just going to be like, you know, stop a ton of other damage ultimates coming through. It isn't like that. And this is one of the reasons why we always need a okay, Zen or a Lucio with a Moira, uh, not really an Anna or a Mercy, because they don't have defensive ultimates as such. Mercy's, yes, could kind of be considered defensive, but it's not really, you know? So, mm. well, it kind of is in a way, but it's not totally, yeah? Right then, so what we're looking at here is... Uh, well, I, I, like, I don't know, like, this This to me, I, I don't want to sound harsh here, but this is like some, uh, like, this coalescence isn't bad, but you are wasting the orbs a hell of a lot. Like, we're not looking to maximize orb usage, we're not looking to bounce them around. We're just sort of firing the orbs off 
at random, which is a little bit like. Argh. All right, so it looks like we're going to lose the point, whatever. Or, or are we? It's too sick. We should be losing the point. Everybody is dead. You all went towards me, unluckily. You see, like, your healing is crazy. Like, one thing you could say is maybe your eliminations are a little bit low. Like, if you are spamming orbs a little bit more often than you are, or maybe spamming the damage one at the right time, you will get more eliminations. But like I said, it is difficult to say, this is when you should use the orb. Oh, it's easy for me to say, based off the footage, I can be like, hey, you should have used the heal orb there. You should have used the damage orb. But in the flow of the game, it can be difficult because sometimes a damage orb can do a lot yeah, of work. Like, if somebody is low and you know they're low at the back, you can fire the orb in and just get the kill. Like, I've noticed that Moira is actually, this might sound really crazy, but she's actually quite good at taking out the other supports if you can get to them. I'm not saying flank with Moira. Like, in fact, I do not want you to flank with Moira, but if a team fight breaks out, sometimes what I'll do, like, if they dive into us, right, so their tank line dives in, Moira cannot really be dived because she can just fade away. If you fade forward and go into their support line, if you damage orb and then you right click on a Zen, you will kill him so fast. It is unbelievable. Same goes for the other supports. Anna, she's a bit more difficult because obviously she'll nade herself and Moira will just run away from you. But Zen, you can pretty much wipe the Zen out. Same goes for when you're being attacked as well. Like if you're getting flanked with a, by a Tracer or a Genji, again, the same thing to do is fire the orb, the damage orb, and then fire your uh, damage beam into him and that will probably take them out. Another thing you can do with Genji as well, if Genji's on your team, is you can um, combo your all. So if you combo uh, Coalescence and Genji's blade together, what you do is you track Genji with your Coalescence, right? It will heal him as he's going through his blade. It's not going to make him do more damage, but it's just going to keep him alive. That orb as well is the standard orb at the start of this game. You always do that orb, right? Look, you've got 11% alt charge. That's great. I don't know whether you did it. Uh, at the start of the other rounds, maybe you did or you didn't. I don't think I quite caught it, but that's that is like 100% the standard orb on um, Oasis. This is much better, uh, not Oasis, Temple of Movies. This is much better well, we positioning though, because you, and that's great because you notice somebody healing up there, so you throw the orb and it's all Jewish fine, it's all jazzy. But that's yeah. much better positioning because remember, you can reposition really quick. So if you have positional problems with Moira, you can, in theory, correct those problems super fast and get into a position which is going to be beneficial I'm to your team, which is basically a position where you can't okay. be killed by somebody, right? Moira's main counters are like getting blasted by Widowmaker or just taking a load of damage fast, which, like, this is why she's so powerful for a support because she's so durable. Like, look at this. You can jump around in a fight. You can get the hell out of there. You can rejoin your team. It's just, like, she's so good. Okay, uh, one of the things I'm noticing, though, is you are... Uh, no, I don't know. You're kind of doing okay. Like, that there wasn't... That was actually really quite bad. You should have been healing the Winston, and we stopped healing him to do damage. Like, this is a problem... I've got to be honest, I haven't really noticed you suffering from too much in this video. Yeah, there are times when you're damaged when you should be healing. Lower level Moiras spend way too much time doing damage than healing, or they might spend too much time healing than damaging. But spending too much time healing is much better than spending too much time da damaging, right? I'm not saying you would have kept Winston alive there, but you would have helped him much more if you healed him instead of actually, and would have helped the team if you healed him instead of just trying to do like a very small amount of damage. Because what you've got to remember, Moira does a very, very small amount of damage. It's enough damage to deter flankers jumping on top of her. It's enough damage to push people away from her, but she shouldn't really be looking to focus damage in the middle of a team fight. All right. One of the problems we've got, I'm going to pause this now because this is, we need to use coalescence here, right? We've got our orb available. And remember earlier on in the video when I was asking you, like, just use coalescence because we needed a long range healing. Again, shows you how complex this hero is because there isn't just like one set way of approaching her, but always use the orb if you can, then use coalescence because it will maximize the output. So what I need you to do right now is throw in the healing orb and then use coalescence. So we threw in the damage orb and then we use coalescence. Uh, we should be able to burn down her. That's cool. We should be able to heal them up. Throw the healing orb, not the damage orb. <laughs> okay. Good job, guys. I mean, that was okay because there was like one of them left on the point. So throwing the damage orb then, not too bad. But when their big attack broke out, the fact you threw the damage orb in is risky. Like it probably helped. because Well, it did help. It did damage to the enemy. But the heal will always be better in a team fight because it's going to heal your team members who will always do more damage than you. Unless you notice somebody is mega low and you can kill them with the orb. Because remember, the best thing you can do in Overwatch is kill the enemy. If you get an elimination... That's just the, that is like by far the best thing you can do. Like they're gonna expect the okay, so we're just going to roll the same comp again. I wish you changed his crosshair as well. Like what is the point of that crosshair? It's stupid. <laughs> well, it doesn't even serve any purpose, does it? 
But I mean, may maybe it's personal preference. I don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. All right, so let's just recap while waiting for this, the, this to start. Positioning is like iffy at times when you died on the bridge uh, during one of the attack phases. Uh, wasn't great. Uh, no, you died on the point. Actually, you should have been further back on the bridge so you didn't get flanked. Um, orb usage is a little bit like I'm just throwing orbs everywhere. I mean... I guess on the other hand, you guys watching this could argue this is why Moira is considered to be so powerful because you don't actually have to be like an amazing Moira player to make her work. I mean, this player has still done nearly 17,000 healing, which, yeah, this has been over multiple rounds, but that's still a hell of a lot of healing. To even get that sort of healing amount with like a, uh, a Mercy, for example, is much more difficult because Moira does have the ability to do a shed load of like AoE healing really fast, so she can heal a lot. I mean, Mercy has does have the better single target healing don't get me wrong but yeah all right so we're off on the attack again we've thrown that like oh god your your mouse work is so iffy like it's way too sensitive like it's it's a little bit jarring at times but whatever whatever if it works for you it works for you uh yeah that's the also the, the thing we need to remember as well we can heal through enemy barriers now this is actually considered a bug if you go onto the official Blizzard forums, it will tell you that the fact Moira can heal through barriers, we need to get away from that guy, <laughs> um, is a bug. So maybe they'll change that. I don't know. Uh, but you can't damage through barriers unless you throw the damage orb through the barriers. But your damage attack, so your right click, won't actually go through the barrier. But you heal will. And in that case there, you had somebody, I think it was the Genji, jumping on the high ground. You might have been able to heal him. Now, this is the other thing with the heal. It's a bit deceptive in terms of its oh, visual representation. Like, it's hard to gauge if you're actually going to heal somebody at max range. That was a nice heal orb there, because we're getting, like, pretty much jumped on top of. We drop the orb down, and <laughs> we get killed by a Junkrat mine, whatever. <laughs> Junkrat, high skill character. <laughs> so, this is unlucky. From like I know you're not using the voice comms as well. Like the the only benefit you, you could possibly get out of the voice comms point. would be, um, if you were to sort of I, I don't know take mountain. control of the team. But we've already got, got a couple mountains. of shot callers in the team. The like and, and I've got to be honest, once you do have it's a shot caller, even if they're making the wrong calls, it's still kind of better than three people oh, trying to be shot callers. If you get what I'm saying. That's not too bad. Like, you see the damage orb there was actually pretty decent. I do kind of agree with that because we're so close to Coalescence. Now, I just use Coalescence just to secure the point. Although, actually, it's probably a bad call off me because it looks like we were okay. So, yeah, I would have <laughs> Riptire, whatever. I would have wasted my Coalescence there. You didn't, so that was cool. Now, Riptire came in, so that's good. So, we know he's used the Riptire. Um, yeah, the, the other thing you could be doing is calling enemy ultimates out as well. But I guess somebody else on the team is already doing that, but whatever so what we're looking to do now is just barrel roll into the point we need to tell them we're not there this is where voice comms come in like guys i'm not there wait for me guys because they're taking loads of damage now and if one of them dies it's because they've gone in without you and then it's your fault that's what i'd say oh that widow is so low okay that's good nice heal orb and we're going in yeah so oh unlucky with that but it looks actually like we're gonna kind of do okay here it looks like we're gonna be able to take it Oh, uh, Although they're using their ults now. We got there. We got the echo lessons coming in. Just spam heal. Just spam the goddamn heal. Screw the damage. Like on this point now, we've just got it. Also, oh my god, I've got to pause this when we get into this position again. Right. We are losing this fight. We've lost this fight basically. But I can use this as an example to show you the problems with positioning. Right. We've got an enemy McCree there. Yeah. Lucio, and we've got some enemy there. You'll notice that the enemies are within this area, right? Because they'll either come out of the spawn door here, come out of the spawn door there. You, your Moira positioning, you're running around on the point here. This isn't actually that good because we died earlier to a Roadhog who threw his hook onto the point and killed us. What we should be doing is be further back on the bridge here because this massive pillar here will actually protect us from most of the people coming from this way. And uh, obviously there's a pillar on the other side which will kind of protect us from people coming this way. But it means we can spray our healing pretty much onto the whole point here. We can also throw our orbs around. Because remember, as a support, it is your job to stay alive as long as possible while healing enough people. Like... I must stress, though, even if you did have better positioning there, we still would have lost that fight because everybody was dying. Like, that just... That just was the case. That just is what would have happened during that fight. All right, so what we'd be looking to do now, because we've got 35% alt charge, first thing I'm going to do here is just throw in my uh, damage orb, like, as soon as I can, straight through the main door, because they don't have anything to stop this. They don't have a Diva, they don't have a Genji. So you've missed an opportunity to throw it in. Now we're going to throw it in now, but we could have thrown it in, like, five seconds before. So that would have meant we would have had the orb a little bit quicker. Genji is sort of dodgy. They're going around the side. 
I got, I got beat. I got beat. I got beat. He's got beat. <laughs> yeah, he's got beat, ladies and gentlemen. That's, that's... Heal. Yeah, just spam the heal. Like, oh. heal the McCredo, let him die. Oh no! Heal. Right, I just want you to heal. I just, you could have kept that McCree alive there, and you didn't, because you decided to like try and do a bit of healing, and you messed around a bit. La la la. Just use coalescence. Yeah. Uh, you know, let's talk about coalescence targeting as well, because coalescence will burn down the supports. What I tend to do in a fight is I will aim coalescence at the supports, not at the tanks, unless they're mega low. Like, we're screwed here because Tracy just wrecked us, but that there is a Lucio. I'd be targeting the Lucio, not the Orissa. Like, screw the Orissa. You will never do enough damage to her. She's using Fortify. She's getting healed. Like, it's just, you'll never kill her. But you can wipe out a Zen. Like, in fact, there are times where King's Row, I like doing this on King's Row, because a lot of the time you'll see a, a, a Reinhardt on King's Row. You can coalescence through Reinhardt's barrier because it goes through well barriers and blast it straight into the Zen at the back and kill him. And just like tracking him, it'll wipe him out. And that's huge. Like, using an ultimate to kill an enemy is huge, huge, huge. Especially if you kill one of the supports. That is so good. Or it oh, could force out like a transcendence oh, or whatever. We can, we can so this is unfortunate, but you've still got one attack left. So all it isn't lost. We do have a Genji blade, and we've got a Winston Primal. You can hear the guys talking there about what ultimates they've got and what they're going to use. Which you know, I've got to be honest. When I play uh, on my other accounts that are not at this level, you don't notice this in Masters. Like people don't talk at all. There'll be no conversation about ultimate use or nothing. It'll just be like, well, it'll just be people flaming basically, <laughs> which is a shame because Overwatch is such a brilliant game, and people play together. All right then. So we're moving it on to the point. Genji's killing everybody. We are throwing orbs, or we should be. Heal orbs, he's spamming our heal. All right. We got it, boy. Good shit. GG. All right, well played, Genji. Cool game, it was fun. Nice. Good game, it was fun, guys. Okay, so it was a good game. It was an enjoyable game, but there was a lot of problems there with Moira. But I think you can actually be pretty good. Like, obviously, if you're at the level of GM with a Lucio, you have the game knowledge. And I think just with a little bit more practice, you probably will be quite a good Moira player. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Salosa and this is Unit Lost. This has been Over Analyzed. If you'd like to send a video in for consideration to appear on this series, then do follow the instructions that have been on the screen. I will make sure I do these every week, guys. Like I said, they take ages to make and I really enjoy making them. But when I go away, it, it's just so bad, especially when I go to LA for Overwatch League. It's like two days like of travel and then it just ruins me. All right, guys. Anyway, enough moaning, enough excuses. I've been Starlosa. This is Unit Lost. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then leave a comment below and all that jazz and I will catch you guys on the next one. Toodaloo.